I just built this AI system that can make 10 minute long videos for any character you want in one click. So you can have a character like me talk about whatever you want for as long as you want and even drop me into new scenes while my voice stays perfectly the same. Thanks to this build by RoboNuggets, we can finally host our own podcasts together. Right, Luigi? Exactly, Mario. And you can do this for any character too, even animated ones like us. This right here is the real deal for long-form AI videos. No gimmicks, no magic dust. Just pure robo-nuggets tech, keeping my voice smooth as butter the whole way through. You can even use this system for calm, relaxing meditation or ASMR videos. Soft, steady, and peaceful. Or to promote or talk about your products, like this zero-alcohol wine that is 50% off this Black Friday. And of course, you can use it for explainer videos, like if you need great narration for your film that teaches people about emotions. That's right. Any mood is possible, happy or sad. You choose the personality your character brings to life. And all of those were generated by this system, which after spending several hours and hundreds of credits testing the different long-form AI models, we've identified InfiniTalk as the best model among them at this point, which I will teach you how to use and automate in this video. Let's get started. Hey, if you're new here, my name is Jay. I spent a decade in creative and marketing work and half a decade leading data teams and now founded our AI solutions group and Robo Nuggets, our education arm, where we have several hundred members, all AI practitioners across the globe. And here, our mission is to make creating with AI easy to learn regardless what your background is, with a wealth of lessons that most people join for, but most members stay because of the community that we have built. So as mentioned earlier, this system lets you make long-form AI videos where your characters speak in the same voice, which is very important if you want to build them as consistent, recognizable personalities. And just to show some successful examples of AI-generated characters, in the previous lesson, we covered these AI influencers with millions of followers despite being computer-generated. But you also have educational content creators like Zinni Studio, who uses a character to teach in her videos. There's even examples of real people using their own AI avatars to build a following, like this account who posts several times a day by having his avatar speak his thoughts instead of having to record every time. And obviously, these examples we gave in the beginning are just examples since they're familiar to most people, but it goes without saying that what you should use this quite powerful tech for are characters that you create or have license to, since I think that is also what will pay off for you in the long term anyway. And before we dive in, just to quickly show you how this system works, if we have this image of our character, which I'll also speak about on how you can get, along with this long script that we will be feeding into this AI system, when I click execute workflow just to simulate how it works when the automation runs, and when that finished processing, it generated this long form video of Luigi talking about their upcoming movie. Mamma mia, can you believe it's happening again? After all these years, we're finally going back to space. Get your popcorn, buckle your seatbelt, and look up at the night sky, because the Super Mario Galaxy movie is going to remind everyone that there's a whole universe waiting out there. So there you go, long form AI video that is enough to make a podcast even. And because we're using a specific voice that we pre-selected, which I will show later, the voice stays consistent, even if you feed it a different script or a different image of this character. So how do we set this up? Well, this system, we built it in N8N, which if you're completely new, N8N is a no-code automation tool similar to Zapier or Make.com. And the great thing about N8N is if you have this template, which if you're part of the community, you can just download here, you can import that template into N8N and that will load the system for you automatically. But if you want to learn from scratch, don't worry because I'll be going through this automation node by node as well. Because the way it's set up is quite simple, really. We just have a section here where we are creating the voiceover, which is the underlying audio. We create the video with InfiniTalk and then we just log our final output in our tracking sheet. But before we do that, we just need to arrange our inputs, which we are doing here. So if you're in your N8N dashboard, just create a workflow here and then go ahead and add a trigger. So this can be any trigger. You can run it on a schedule if you want, but for this one, we'll just do this simple manual trigger, which runs whenever we execute this workflow through this button. And then the next, we will be loading a Google Sheets node, specifically the get rows in sheet function. We can just rename this so that we know what it does. And if you haven't connected your Google Sheets yet, this is where you do it. You just sign in with Google and N8N will be able to access your Google Sheets, which you can select here. And for this one, we'll just be selecting this template, which if you're part of the community, you can just grab here. But if you're setting it up yourself, it is also quite simple. You just need to add in your script, the voice that you want, 
and also the event reference will use for your character. And then apart from that, some optional fields are these IDs just to identify what this specific video is about. Then we have this task status, which just shows if we are about to create this video or it's already done and also a place where we will load the final output. So how this works is I just select this sheet and then we filter for the rows here where we have the task status set to create. In case you want to do one video at a time, you can just add an option here for return only first matching row and toggle that on. So when we execute this step that now loads those information into our N8N instance. But the question of course is how do you get this image reference as well as this voice ID? Well if we click on this image reference you can see it just points to a picture of our character which if you don't have that yet you can use Google Gemini if you need a free image. So you can see here I just gave it a pretty simple prompt and I got this image in return. But the problem with Google Gemini is that you can't really declare the aspect ratio. So if you want something that's horizontal or vertical it's hard to get that out of this tool. And so usually to get these starting images right now we use the cdream model here at key.ai because if you go here if you provide a prompt like this you can indicate the image size that you want you can generate in 4k and you can also generate multiple images at a time just so that you can select which one you want to use and obviously super mario is quite popular but if you need to place your own character into the scene you can go to this edit feature where you can upload an image of your own character in here and give it a prompt and what cdream will do is place that character into a different scene and now this image if you decide to use it you can just do a right click and copy this image address and use that as the URL for this input sheet. And if you want to dive deeper into how to make those images or to automate creating them as well, then you can check out this previous lesson. But now that we have our image, how did we get this voice ID? Well, the tool that we'll be using to generate our voice would be 11 labs in this case. And so if you go to their voice library in this URL, you can just head to voices and search for the voice that you want in here. And when I was browsing through, I found this voice. And when you click on that, you can actually preview it. I tell you, the family is the only important thing in the world. And once we've decided on that voice, we can just click on this ellipsis and copy the voice ID and paste it here. And of course, you want to put in your script here in this column. And there you go. That is all the setup you need. And now these inputs have been loaded into N8N. So the next node that we'll need is going to be an HTTP request, which we use a lot in the community because it's the main way by which we can call on third-party tools and models from within N8N. Which, if you're completely new, just to explain N8N's design of working, here on the left is always going to be your input section. So these are all the information coming from previous nodes. And the items here are the setup for your node that you're configuring, which once we execute this step, we'll find the outputs of this node here on the right. And to set this up, we just want to rename this to create voice so that we know what it does. We change this to post because we'll be posting a request and we'll be posting a request to this URL, which if you can see is the 11 labs model, but we're doing it via wavespeed.ai. And if you go to wavespeed.ai, you'll find that they're basically an AI model aggregator and they let us access these models much easier and also allow us to use them in automations. So if I just search for 11 labs here, here on this page, you can actually try the model out directly. And the benefit to using these models via API providers like wavespeed AI is that you can access these models on a pay-as-you-go basis versus if you do it directly via 11 labs usually with these platforms you need to subscribe to a more significant monthly plan in order to get it running and also to connect your automations to these platforms natively is usually much more complex but here in WaveSpeed, all we need to do to connect it to n8n is to go to their api tab and you can actually copy this and import it into n8n which makes it much easier but i usually just recommend doing it another way because this way is more secure so you can see here the url that we are going to post it to which we copied here and the actual message of the request we're going to copy this piece within the brackets that is going to be the body so we'll toggle this on and for the body we'll do it using json or javascript object notation which is basically a structured format so whenever you see these brackets that's essentially what json is so if we change this to expression we can just copy this piece and if we expand this this is now the structure that wave speed will accept to run the 11 labs model. So now what I'll do is I'll just remove this piece of text and also the voice ID. And then if you insert this, what that will now get is the script coming from the previous node, which we have loaded coming from our Google Sheet. And then this voice ID, you can just drag this voice ID in between those double quotes and that will load the final structure for you. Now, if we run this, it's not going to work yet. And the reason why is because we haven't set up our authorization yet. So to do that, the method I suggest is to go to authentication, click generic credential type, click on header auth, and here you can just create a new credential, rename it with something memorable. And to find out what to put, I usually just refer to their example here. So what we need to type in is authorization. And then if we copy this in and change this to expression, 
so that we can see what we are typing. Basically, what you need to type is bearer space and then replace this whole thing with your API key in WaveSpeed. Which to get that, you can just click on your profile and click on API keys. And here is where you can create a key, which you can just paste here like so and then click on save. So once you have that credential selected, if we re-execute this step, what it should now do is give you a status code of 200, which means that WaveSpeed has now called on their 11 labs model to create this voice file. And so we just need to wait a bit for that to finish. So just go ahead and find a wait node, change this to 20 seconds so that we can wait for that to finish. And when you execute this node, you can then continue building this out for another HTTP request. But this one is for us to get the voice. So the way you do it for WaveSpeed at least is to set the method to get. And then if I look at my create voice node in here, what they actually do is provide you with this URL, which is the right URL where they will store your video. So just go ahead and drag that into this field, click on execute step. And that failed because I hadn't selected my authorization yet. So let's just go ahead and do that. So once your wave speed credentials are selected, click on the execute step. And the output of this depends if your audio has been generated already. And in this case, it has, which is here in this mp3 file, which if you paste that in your browser, you can actually download that file to preview. After all these years, we're finally going back to space. So that sounds pretty good. And if you want to keep it simple, this actually already works since you have the audio file already. But if you want to make it more robust, usually what we do is add a switch node where basically we add in two routing rules. So I'll just go ahead and rename this so that you can see visually where the first routing rule is named as success. The next routing rule is named as in progress. And then if I add in an option here for fallback output and change this to extra output, if I go back to our main workflow, this switch node will now handle cases where this voice is still generating. And so if it's in progress, we'll just continue to wait a bit. If it results to an error, we'll map it to this fallback node, which I'll show where that leads in just a bit. And if it's a success, we'll just go and create the video as the next step. But just going back to this switch node, for wave speed, the way to set it up is by checking this status attribute. So if I just drag that there, if it says completed, that means the video has been a success. If this status says that it is still processing, that means the video is still in progress. And if in case none of those are true, we just map it as an error. So now if we execute this switch by clicking on this play button, what it now did is pass our voice file into this branch, which we can just continue building out to create the video. Now to make this simpler, what I suggest you do is just highlight these four nodes, click on Control D, because they're pretty much the same nodes, just with a different setup, and just map this success node into this next one. So if I open that, this one will now be to create a video. We'll still be posting a request, but to a different URL, because if we go back to wave speed and search for infinite talk this is now the model that we'll use to create our video and similar to other models you can also test this out directly here in the playground and very simply you can see here that the only inputs it needs is your driving audio which is the voiceover we just created as well as the image of your character so to use it in an automation again you just need to read through this api tab which we've already done and so the right url to put here would be this one make sure your credential is selected but this time the body of your message request will need to change as well so if we just expand this so that we can see you can type in this piece. What we're doing is we're passing in the audio that we generated, which is this one. We're passing in the image reference, which if you remember, came from our inputs in the very beginning. The resolution can be 480p or 720p, although it has implications on the costs, which I'll summarize later. And here you can actually put in a prompt to guide what your character will do. So for this one, we'll just leave it as blank because it's optional, but you can do something like minimal movement, or let's say the character smiles a lot. So you can just test those out. But once we run this, what it will now do is submit all of the those inputs into infinite talk and once you receive a message of success what that basically means is that wave speed now passed your request to activate the infinite talk model and create that video and so like before we just have a wait node here which we can just run in order to wait a bit and once that node has finished we are now going to get our video so this one you can just rename the url here just make sure that it points to the create video url where you can get your generation and when we execute that step it will just show you if it is still processing which in this case it still is or if the video is already ready. So in this case, it's still processing. And so if I just run this switch node, you can see that what it did is just map this into the in progress. So in practice, when this automation runs, it will just map back into this wait node for us to wait a bit more. And then we'll activate this get the video again to see or poll if this video is already ready. So if you're curious as a benchmark, that five to six minute video of Luigi we generated earlier, that took around 30 minutes actually. So you can see here this wait node ran six to eight times and this wait node was 30 seconds. So it can take a while, especially if you're creating long form videos, but it's fully automated anyway. So you can 
just leave it and come back and your video should be ready. So in this case, our video should be ready now. So what I'll just do in order to rerun this is I will highlight all of these nodes, press on P, and then also this create video, press on P. And what that will do is just pin the data in those nodes just so that they don't get ran again. Because if they run again, what will happen there is it will create the voice again and it will create the video again. And so this way, we are just going to execute these nodes again when we click on execute workflow. So what has happened there is now when we pulled wave speed via this get video node, what it now said is that the status is completed and we have our output in here, which we can actually preview, but we'll save that for the end. And then in this switch node, it now maps to the success, which we can just finish it with this Google Sheets node, specifically the update row in sheet function. And we can just rename this as success. We can find the sheet we were working with and it should fetch the columns automatically because the job of this node is simply to update this task status to done and place your final output here. And so to do that, I suggest to just change this to row number. And then if we go back to our very first input node here, we can just drag this row number in this column. So you can see it says 41 because this is row 41. You set the task status to done and then the output you want to get from the previous switch node here. And here under outputs, you will find this MP4 file. And so that is the one that we want to drag in this field. And so if we execute this step, you'll find that this task status will update to done and it will put our mp4 file in here so if we just preview that mama mia can you believe it's happening again after all these years we're finally going back to space when i first floated around the stars with my brother mario i never thought we'd see those galaxies come to life on the big screen and there you go that is now your video fully generated. And this step is optional, but if you want to also understand what the errors would be, if in case your video has failed to generate, what you can just do is copy this node, place it here, and then map the two fallback branches into that new node. And to configure that, just open this. Everything here should stay the same, but the task status, you want to set that now as error. And for the output here, you will need to put in the error log. And for wave speed, this is the expression that you need. And so when it errors, what this will now show is the reason for that error that wave speed will provide to you. You can see it's empty now just because this one was already successful. And there you go, that is now the system in full. And if you're curious about the costs, what I actually did in this template is put in this column that will estimate how much this whole video will cost, counting our generation for 11 labs plus the infinite talk model. So you can see this one was estimated to only be 60 cents, which is quite economical. And as mentioned in the beginning, we did try the other models just to test and also compare. So these ones, I tried all of them. They pretty much do the same thing as infinite talk, but at much higher prices as you can see. So if I were to recommend just one model that you use, right now I think WaveSpeed's Infinite Talk instance would be your best bet. Now obviously there are still limitations to this model because as you may have noted, what it simply does is animate a character to speak. Now what I'm excited about is that Sora 2 seems to be deploying character cameos very soon. So what this will mean is that you can create a cameo of your character and place them in more dynamic scenes apart from speaking. So when that drops, we'll be sure to make a lesson on it so that you can utilize that tool as well. But if you need a shortcut and this template, you can just grab it in the Robo Nuggets community. We have dozens more lessons here around creating with AI and automation. And we also have a strong community of AI practitioners here. So you can see people regularly post paid opportunities here if that's what you're after. And we also have several discounts to AI tools, which our members get as a benefit. So check that out if that's for you, just in the link below. And by the way, if you haven't subscribed yet to this platform, then consider doing so because it helps us put out more educational content like this. That's it for this one. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.